Creating a custom tab bar in SwiftUI is an incredibly fun and rewarding experience because it allows you to tailor the navigation experience exactly to your app's unique needs, giving your project a polished and personalized look. This video will give you a step-by-step -step example, making it easy to follow along regardless of your skill level. By building your own custom tab bar, you unlock the full potential of SwiftUI's flexibility and creativity, enabling you to craft user interfaces that stand out. Also, this is the last day when you can grab my SwiftUI summer sale. The link is down in the description. Today, we are going to talk about some custom tab views. Uh, I have created one over here and uh, this is how it looks like. Now this could be a really great starter point for uh, for you to maybe kind of do the new uh, liquid glass type of animation. Yeah, this is just code letting you know how to move this slider from one tab item to the other. This is custom build, so we are not going to use the tab view from Swift UI. And I also have prepared some stuff. So uh, uh, let me just move to the files. I have some tab views, so the profile view, search view, home view, what you already saw. And then in the content view, uh, I have uh, a namespace, selected tab and the group. So I have just prepared uh, the groundwork for the custom tab war. So what I'm going to do, I just comment these two out, the namespace and the custom tab bar. We are going to use the namespace inside the custom tab bar. And uh, then I'm just going to simply uh, uh, delete it because we are going to build this out uh, today. So let's create a new empty file and let's name this custom tab bar. And um, yeah, let's import Swift UI and let's make a struct. And that would be our custom tab bar of type view. And of course it will have some body. For now, let's just have an H stack over here. That's just it. And uh, what do we actually need? Well, we need some sort of a binding to the actual selected tab bar. And also this animation, you know, the namespace that uh, we already have. We're going to talk about that in just a second. So first of all, a binding uh, var selected tab of type string. And then the animation. Animation that will be a namespace.id. Okay, so then we are going to uh, create uh, basically the, the tabs and we, those will be strings. So uh, let tabs and that will be an array of uh, string values. And uh, if I remember correctly, there is home, home, there we go. And then search and then profile. And there we go. Okay. So um, before we dive into uh, the uh, whole horizontal stack that we have inside the body, let me just create the actual icon. So uh, we are going to use some system names. So I rather prefer having a separate uh, function for this. So we're just going to, you know, spit it out with this uh, specific function and everything, all of these uh, system named icons are set up in one place. This is your last chance to grab the most complete SwiftUI bundle I've ever put together. You'll get everything I've built, over 20 premium digital products, plus a seed in my live SwiftUI camp, starting July the 1st on Zoom. The full value is over $3,000, but today you can get it for only $1.99. Whether you're just starting out or ready to sharpen your skills, this is the moment to commit. Spots of the live camp are limited, and once they are gone, they are gone for good. If you've been waiting for the right time to invest in yourself as a SwiftUI developer, this is it. So this will be a private var func icon for, and that will be the string. That is the tab, the either home, search, or profile. And uh, we are going to return a string value, which will be the, be, uh, the uh, system named icon. And let me just copy this out from my notes so I don't have any typos in there. Uh, let's just indent that with Control-I. So home search profile, basically these are 
uh, what we are going to return and for tab there we go we do need this tab over here okay and um and let's just see what's going on over here oh not private var func just private func okay there we go okay so now let's see what we need for this horizontal stack well first of all we need to uh, space it to the correct uh, alignment uh, at the bottom so for that we need a few paddings and uh, a background uh, a shadow so again i'm going to copy this out because this is tedious and uh, it's uh, you know, uh, that, uh, writing it out will take a long time. So horizontal 20, top 10, and bottom 20. And here we have that uh, shadow uh, for our tab bar. Okay, so that's kind of the nitty gritty of it. Now, what do we need over here? We have horizontal stacks. So we are going to lay out these tab items horizontally. So first of all, um, let me just create a, a starter private func private func uh, tab item for the tab that will be another string and this will return some view some view okay and for now let's just have a text here just as a placeholder okay so we are going to have a for each to just have uh, these inside our horizontal stack so uh, for each uh, tabs and uh, uh, all of these tabs now none of them have an ID because they are not identifiable so uh, I will, will assume that uh, these string values are unique which basically they should be why not and then uh, the ID should be self and then we are going to have tab in and then our tab item for the tab okay so that's our setup uh, finally we get to the really interesting part over here which is our tab item now we are going to have three layers one with the kind of the capsule that is going to move uh, around and then a button and some text now you may add uh, the text uh, at the bottom uh, with home search and profile uh, to be inside that button I prefer not to so uh, let me just uh, start off uh, with from the bottom up so we are going to have a text well first of all we need a v stack v stack and uh, I found that a spacing uh, of four uh, is the best spacing of four there we go and then let's have our text over here text with a tab remember this is a string so that's uh, fine uh, font will be caption there we go and then a foreground style foreground style and let's pause a little bit here to discuss this whether this is selected or not it will have a different uh, foreground style so selected tab if this is true we are going to have um, oh the so selected tab is our current tab so selected tab then it's just going to be blue but you can just set it to the accent color if you wish i'm just setting blue right over here so you can see that you can add custom colors too and otherwise it should be gray okay and then we also want to add uh, right over here on the vertical stack a max width this is really important for layout issues uh, we are going to have a frame and max width there we go dot infinity okay so we have our text over here next up uh, we want to add our button so a button and uh, i prefer the one with the action and label there we go in the action let's take care uh, of the of the labor first so we're going to have an image and that will be a system name of and now we need to grab our system name we're just going to say icon for our tab it's pretty straightforward right and then we are going to stylize it again we are going to have a font dot font and uh, the system sizes don't really fit over here so i figured that this should be a dot system size and a 20 
and with a weight of semi bold. This looks like the built in uh, tab uh, item icon. Okay, and then the foreground style the same as for the tab. Okay, let's just add it over here. Now, what about the action of our button? Well, we are going to uh, move that capsule with an animation. So we actually need the trigger select, uh, setting the selected tab within a width animation body. There we go. Uh, and uh, uh, we are, let me just add in the code basically selected tab equals tab, but that will be a really rigid animation. So it's just going to go over there just over there it's going to be really chunky so we can also add some animation properties and uh, i'm just going to add a spring animation uh, with a response yeah there we go response and damping factor so uh, let me just uh, use this one and just go response uh, response 0.3 i found to be perfect and then uh, a damping fraction to be 0.3 Seven. I know these are kind of magic numbers. Again, I tested this out. Uh, these seem to uh, be pretty great uh, for uh, the use case. Okay, so this is coming together. This is really nice. Let's just see how this looks like uh, before we move forward to the whole uh, uh, idea of our project currently. So uh, let's just have this commented in and let's see it. Let's see how this looks like. This should be a basic tab view, right? So there we go. It's really nice. Okay, but we need to add uh, uh, even more like that, that capsule. So let's do that. Let's go back to our custom tab bar and let's add in our um, capsule. We are going to use the capsule. Now, this should be on the specific tab item if the selected tab equals the set tab. So if selected tab equals tab, then we are going to have this capsule and uh, we are going to have a fill uh, with color blue, not style, but color dot blue. There we go. And uh, we are going to have a frame of height height of four. Again, these are magic numbers, but uh, you get the idea. And then an offset of set of y, y of minus eight, and um, else to not have, uh, you know, we do need to uh, have a placeholder anyway when uh, it is not the equals the selected tab. So we are going to have a color dot clear uh, with a frame of four. So let me just copy this out and paste it in there. So uh, let's see it right now. Let's go back to the content view. And then as you can see, it is actually really nice uh, because we added with animation, it is fading in, but this is actually not what we uh, want. We actually want, uh, want to you know, just animate over there. This is where the match geometry effect will take place. And we need to add it after the field before the frame. So we are going to have over here matched geometry effect with an ID and the in. So the ID has to be a unique ID. And I'm just going to go underline, underline over here. And as you can see, we do need actually a namespace dot ID, which we do have it right over here as the animation. Now, why do we need to bring it into this custom tab bar? Well, because we need a single source of truth and that source of truth needs to be outside right over here for that animation. We're just passing it along. Okay, let's test this out. There we go. Really, really nice. And basically that's it. Now you have a custom tab bar. And if you do like my teaching style and these types of tutorials, also go ahead and check out my Swift UI summer sale. The link is down in the description.